Hello everybody, this is Matt with MathsMath.com. Thanks for joining us here today as we talk about square roots and the Pythagorean Theorem. You might just want to say that a few times now, pause the video and just say it over again. Pythagorean, Pythagorean, Pythagorean. Oh wait, you're supposed to say it. Alright, so let's get talking about the Pythagorean Theorem, right? We're in the Common Core Standard of Geometry and today we're going to be talking about understanding the Pythagorean Theorem. Big part of the Common Core Standard here. Okay, so your guiding question idea is we're going to be able to estimate square roots of a number and use the Pythagorean theorem to find the length of a triangle that's missing. Okay, pretty cool and powerful stuff that we can use the Pythagorean theorem with. Well, when you think about Pythagorean theorem, you might not necessarily think of a big screen TV. Well, but you can. Because whenever someone says, if you've ever thought about it, the measurement of a TV, say this 47 inch TV, it doesn't mean the length up and down or the or the height up and down or the width left and right it means the distance across the diagonal across is the length or the width of the t or the um, size of the TV there okay so we can use the Pythagorean theorem to find the length or the height of the TV if we're given the diagonal and one of the other dimensions okay so that's how they measure TVs pretty cool Let's do it. Let's get into it. First, we've got to talk about square root stuff, okay? So let's talk about finding the square of a number or the square root of a number. Now, notice here, when I say 4 times 4, I can write it as 4 squared with this little bitty baby 2 up top, okay? So we can do that. And then 4 squared is 16. Now, if you think about it, going back the other way, it's called square root. We put this radical symbol here over 4 times 4. So the radical or the square root of 4 squared, which is 16, the square root of it, is 4. Now you could say it's plus or minus 4 because what is negative 4 times negative 4? Well that's positive 16. Okay so you take the square root symbol here and you take it and you square root the number there. Now if you think about it why it's called squaring a number is because what is a square of 4 by 4? The area of that is nothing else but 16. Okay, So when we go backwards we think of a number like 16 and we think of what square would have the dimensions left and right, up and down? When you multiply them together, it would give you 16. Well, that's 4. What about something like this? Same thing. 13 times 13 is 13 squared with a little bit of baby 2. It's 169. That's squaring it. Now, square rooting it, the square root of 13 times 13 is the square root of 13 squared, which is the square root of 169, or just simply 13. And again, if we want to put it in a square term, we have 13 in the, is the height, 13 is the width, 13 times 13 is 169. And what other way do you go back to get a square with those dimensions, equal dimensions, is take the square root. Okay. So now, something like this, the square root of 1.69, pretty simple. If you think about it, 13 times 13 is 13 squared and 169. 1 1.3 times 1 1.3 is 169. Count the decimal places, one there, one there. We end up with two over there. Okay, so it's 1.3. Now, what about something like this? We take the square root of 25 over 81. Well, that's pretty easy. All you got to do is take the square root of 25, which is 5, and the square root of 81, which is 9, and it is simply 5 ninths. What about something weird like these? Again, it's using PEMDAS. You think about what PEMDAS says, you do exponents first. And I'll give you a little hint. Square root is like an exponent. Okay, so do the exponent first, and then multiply, and then add. And then here, we've got to do the square root, the exponents first. Well, we take the square root of 5 over 121, multiply it by 11, and then 8 minus that number. Why don't you do these on your own? All right, you getting it? Here we go. Treat them like PEMDAS, okay? And treat square roots like exponents. Here they are. First one was 21, second one was 3. All right, now let's talk about the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, this theorem says that if you know the length of both of the legs of a right triangle, you can find the length of the hypotenuse. Or you can go backwards, too. But this funny word, leg, Actually, no, that's not that funny, is it? No, hypotenuse, that's way funny. All right, why on earth would we name it hypotenuse? Other than the fact that it's a Greek term. All right, well, legs here, 
legs of a triangle are the line segments that form the right angle in a right triangle, okay? So if we do that, here is our triangle. The legs are that guy and that guy, okay? Those are the legs. Now the other weird word, hypotenuse, you might want to pause the video and say that one too. Hypotenuse, hypotenuse, wait, I mean you should pause the video and do that. All right, hypotenuse is the line segment that is across from the right angle in the right triangle. It's always the longest side, okay? It's always the longest side in a right triangle, and it's that guy right there. All right, so the Pythagorean theorem says that if you square the legs and add them together, you will get the hypotenuse squared. And it's simply just a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Probably have heard it. A and B are the legs, okay? A and B are the legs, and C is the hypotenuse, okay? So, here is Y, if you are interested. Let's take a triangle like this. You've got A, B are legs, C is the hypotenuse, and what I'm doing is I'm just copying it and putting another one over there, okay? Just going to take this triangle, copy it, and put it right there. Just copy and paste. And you know what? I'm doing it again. And you know what? I'm going to do it again. So now we have four of the original triangles. Can you tell me what the, le the lengths of each sides are? Well, this square in the middle is C by C. So this square is C squared. So the blue right there is C squared. Now notice what I did here. I took this triangle and I slid it down here. And imagine what I'm going to do with this triangle. I slide it over there. All right, I've got now a rectangle here, a rectangle there. Now remember, the blue area, I ha I've just displaced things. I haven't moved it around. I've only moved the yellow triangles, and the blue area is still C squared. So if you think about it here, what is the area of this triangle right there? Well, it's A. It's A there, and guess what? It's A there. So the triangle there, or the square there, is A squared. And now we're going to do the bigger one. It's B by none other than B here. So B times B is B squared. So now what we're doing, that blue area, which was originally C squared, we've taken everything, folded it around, moved it over. Blue is C squared. Blue is also B squared plus A squared. Bam, that's the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, that's it. All right, so here's an example. We've got a right triangle. You've got three and four. So in order to solve it, we take three squared, add it to four squared, and then take the square root of that big number, and you get x. So here we go. Three squared plus four squared equals x squared. Now you might think, hey, why don't we just take three plus four and then square it? Well, you know what? PEMDAS doesn't work that way. You always have to do exponents first, okay? So here it is, 9 plus 16 equals x squared, 25 equals x squared, take the square root, use that funny radical thing, and you get 5. This is called a 3, 4, 5 right triangle, and this will always be the case. If you make a triangle with 3, 4, and 5 as the lengths, you will be making a right triangle, okay? It's called a Pythagorean triple. Here's some pretty sweet triples, all right? Now, this is the 3, 4, 5 triangle. And notice what I did here. I put it in red. These are also Pythagorean triples. 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, 10, 9, 12, 15. But how did I go from 3, 4, 5 to 6, 8, 10? Well, all we did was multiply each of these by 2. 3 times 2, 4 times 2, 5 times 2. And here, 3 times 3, 4 times 3, 5 times 3. All right, so each of these is a Pythagorean triple. So if you see a triangle that has a length of 6 and a length of 8, and it's a right triangle, you know that the hypotenuse is going to be 10. Study these over, and definitely write some of these down, because they will come up, I bet, in the work that you're going to be looking at. Notice how many of them are consecutive, like this one, 3, 4, 5, 12, 13, 24, 25, 40, 41, 60, 61, 84, 85, 1, 112, 113, and the list goes on. Pretty cool. I would definitely write these ones down. These ones you might want to commit to memory, too. You'll see them quite often. 
So here, notice we don't have the hypot we don't we have the hypotenuse, but we don't have this leg. So instead of adding the two, you subtract these two. Okay? So working backwards says that three x or three squared plus x squared equals five squared. Well, you do that, and you get sixteen equals x squared, x equals four. So just work backwards, okay? So if you're given the hypotenuse, add these two. If you're given or if you're not given the hypotenuse, add these two. If you are given the hypotenuse in one of the legs, subtract the two, okay? Why don't you work on these? Hint, use the Pythagorean triples to check your work. All right, here's another one on the right. Give you some decimals there. Try those guys. If you're having trouble taking the square root, I would recommend using a calculator. All right, and here's some more. Here's some combined shapes, I'm trying to figure out what x is. All right, here are your answers. Do you have any trouble? Definitely go back and work over some of the problems that you may have missed. But using the Pythagorean theorem is going to come in handy throughout the rest of your math career. In Mathland, it's a sweet, sweet theorem. Well, can you do this now? Can you estimate square roots of a number? Figuring them out, solving them, taking the square root of it, and using the Pythagorean theorem to find the length of that triangle? I bet you can. All right, well, that's the end of the lesson today, talking about square roots and the Pythagorean theorem and watching TV. This is Matt with MathsMath.com. Thanks for joining us. Check us out on Facebook at Solving Maths Problems and on Twitter at MathsMath. And enjoy math, guys.